What's going on guys? So I want to start making more advice and opinion videos and I was just working on my annual guide and I came to the testing section and I kind of got the urge to make a video talking a little bit about what testing is, the benefits, the main types of testing and the main topic of if and when you should write tests as a web developer because it's a question that I've, I've got a lot over the, the past few years. You know, should I learn testing? When do I use it? What types of tests should I write? And I will preface this by saying that I'm not an expert on testing. I've written tests for a few serious projects, but I'm definitely not a testing guru. So take everything that I say with a grain of salt. I'm just giving you my experience and, and my opinions based on you know things that I've seen and people I've talked to. So to start with, let's talk about what testing is, um, the different types of testing and the benefits. So it is the process of writing code that tests your code. And it's a way to make sure that everything is working as expected. It's made to ensure the reliability, functionality, and security of your applications. And it can obviously help you identify and fix bugs. It can improve performance. It can increase user satisfaction. So testing can be done on both the front end and back end. There's all types of, of libraries and frameworks you can use for every language. So for example, if you're using JavaScript, you can use a framework like Jest or Mocha. If you're using PHP, there's PHP Unit. Uh, for Ruby, you have RSpec and so on. So there's also frameworks that can be used for multiple languages like Selenium and Cypress. Um, so there's a lot of options out there and you just have to look into them. I do have some crash courses, for instance, on Jest and Mocha. Uh, if you wanna check those out, I'll leave the links in the description. Now, we should probably talk a little bit about test-driven development or TDD. Uh, it's a, a software development approach that emphasizes writing your tests before writing the actual code for a feature or a, a piece of functionality. And it follows a specific cycle known as the red-green factor cycle where red is the initial phase, you know, you write the, the initial failing test case, and the test case defines the behavior you'd expect from the code you're about to write. So at this stage, there's no implementation code yet, which of course results in a, fail, uh, a test fail, and that's indicated by a red status. And then after writing that failing test, your next step is to write the minimum amount of code necessary to make that test pass and make it green. Okay, the goal is to write the simplest code that fulfills the test case requirements. That's the green phase. And then once the test passes, you can refactor the code and improve it. And the key is that when you, ref you refactor, you do it with confidence knowing that if you accidentally introduce a bug, the existing tests will catch it. All right, so you don't have to follow TDD to write tests. You can just as well write your code first and then write the test for it after. But TDD is a really popular approach and something that you might want to look into if you're, you know, if you're building large, complex applications. Now, as far as types of testing, there's a, a lot of different types. I'm not going to go over all of them. I'll just go over basically the, the top three or the most common three. So unit testing, I would say, is the most common, at least for web developers. Uh, it's the process of testing individual units of code. So for example, let's say you have a function that takes in a number and returns the square of that number. So you can write a test to make sure that that works. For instance, you could have it pass in a two and make sure that the result is a four. So unit testing is just a, a way to test individual functions or units of code. And this is most likely where you're gonna get started. All right, then you have integration testing which is the process of, of testing how different parts of your application work together. So for example, you may want to test the interaction between, let's say, a shopping cart and a payment gateway. So you could basically simulate a user adding products to their cart, going through the checkout, making payment, and the test would verify that when the user initiates payment, the shopping cart correctly communicates with the payment gateway, it sends all the order details that are needed, and then receives a, a confirmation response. Okay, so that's an example of integration testing. And then end-to-end -end testing is the process of testing the entire application from start to finish. So for example, if you have a, a website, you can write a test that will open the browser, navigate to the website, click on the links, uh, fill out forms, all that stuff. It's a, it's a way to test the entire application as the user would. And this is usually done with a framework like Selenium or Cypress. And I'd say this is 
probably the most difficult uh, and time-consuming type of testing. And I honestly don't have much experience with it at all. Um, so th there are other types like performance testing, security testing, but I'm not going to go over those. I just wanted to give you an idea of the, the different types of testing. For the most part, when I was putting this video together, I was thinking mostly about unit testing. All right, so now let's get to the main part of the video, which is when should you write tests? And unfortunately, as with most things, there is no black or white answer. I know that people on the internet, they love to argue about things like this and say, yes, you should always write tests. You're a bad developer if you don't, or no, they're a waste of time. But it's, it's not that simple. It depends on a lot of different factors. And many times it's on a project by project basis, which is usually what I, what I choose my path on is, is by the project. So let's just go over some things that you should consider when deciding whether or not to write tests. So one of the most important factors is the size and complexity of your project. If you're working on a small project that has limited functionality, I think in many cases writing tests, it can be a waste of time and, and it's just not worth the effort. Um, most of the functionality you can just test manually. So for example, if you're building like a simple landing page with some forms and a few animations, you can test it by just clicking around and making sure everything works. You can use the dev tools, look at the HTTP request and response, use console logs, things like that. Um, small projects aren't as prone to bugs, obviously, and it's not going to be a nightmare to maintain in most cases. So in my opinion, it's probably not worth the time to write tests for smaller projects. However, as your project grows in complexity, testing becomes more important and if you're building a really large application with a lot of functionality, it's gonna be a lot harder to do all those tests manually. So in that case, it's probably worth the time to write some automated tests. It is very convenient to you know, update your code and then just run NPM test or whatever to see if it works, rather than going through all the motions in the browser and doing it manually. Um, you know, Sure, it takes more time initially because you're writing more code, but it will most likely save you a lot of time in the long run. And it'll also make it easier to maintain. So uh, I'm still not saying that you should always write tests for every large project. There are other factors to consider, but in general, I'd say it might not be a, a bad idea to look into. So the next one is what does your timeline look like? If your timeline is really short and, and it's crucial, you know, if you're freelancing or, or even working for a, a small agency, one of the most important things or the most important thing is to get client projects out quickly. So you probably don't want to spend a lot of time writing tests if you don't need to. Also, in my experience, freelance projects are not usually complex applications with multiple developers. They're more like small business websites, WordPress sites, static websites. So the, the types of projects that you do when you freelance don't really need tests from my experience. Now, I know when you work for a company, they can give you ridiculous deadlines as well. However, if you've ever worked as a freelancer, you know that dealing with clients is usually much worse than dealing with a boss. Um, in my experience, it's, it's much easier to push deadlines back when you work for a company. When you're a, a freelancer or you're running a small agency, you're dealing with people who don't understand the development process and they really don't care. They just want their project done. So if you're really strapped for time, and it's not a complex project, I'd say skip the tests. So next one is how often does your code change? Think of it this way, if your project is constantly evolving with new features or existing ones being tweaked regularly, testing can become a lifeline. And it's like having a safety net that catches unexpected problems that pop up when you, you, know, when you make changes. So even though it will take some time to implement testing, it can save you even more time in the long run. And without testing, you might find yourself in kind of a never ending cycle of just fixing bugs and dealing with issues created by each line of new code that you write. So if your code is going to see a lot of action, testing can help keep things stable and hassle free. Another factor is how big your team is. If you're working on a team, testing can help kind of facilitate that collaboration especially if it's a, a bunch of people like myself that don't work very well with, I shouldn't say I don't work well with people, but I'm not a great communicator. So automated tests can serve as documentation and it can help team members kind of understand the different parts of the application and how it should behave. 
and it also reduces the risk of um, you know, introducing errors when there's multiple developers working on the same code base. So I would say those are the main things to look at when deciding whether or not you're gonna write tests. You have to look at the size and the complexity of your project. You have to look at the timeline, um, how often your code changes, and how big your team is. And if you're working on a small project with a tight deadline and you're the only developer, it's probably not worth the time to write the tests. However, if you're working on a large project with a ton of functionality and a, and a large team or even a small team, it's probably a good idea to at least think about writing some tests. And a lot of you might disagree with some of or, or all of what I just said, and that's absolutely fine. This video is just about me sharing just kind of my own opinions and advice and experience. So hopefully you guys could learn something from it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.